What's going on guys? Ashley with Hidden Profits Crypto here. Before we get into today's video as usual, I want to give a huge thanks to everybody who's been supporting the channel. We got a lot of new subscribers, so if you're new, welcome. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, make sure to do so. We upload three videos a week on low cap altcoins, hidden gems, and other great projects. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into today's video. All right, so today um, we're going to be taking a look uh, KDL or KD launch. Uh, they've actually announced their IDO structure. Uh, so I figured, as usual, we're going to take a look at pretty much everything involving Cadena. So I figured we would go ahead and look over this article. And then at the end, I'll kind of give a little bit of my thoughts on the way that they have it structured. Um, but let's just go ahead and hop into it. So as always here, uh, start off at the Twitter page. KD Launch is uh, their official Twitter. So if you're not following them already, make sure to do so. Uh, this is the article that we're going to be taking a look at. It was launched on January 9th. So dear KDL launch community, we are happy to share today our IDO fundraiser structure, tiers, pools, and staking for the platform. This simple, fair, and balanced fundraising platform will serve the Cadena community well. So let's go ahead and head over to the article, and I will leave a link in the description if you guys want to read over it yourself as well. So KD Launch aims to be a simple, fair, and balanced fundraising platform. The KD Launch team has spent a fair amount of time architecting the initial DEX offering or IDO structure for the platform uh, to make sure all KD launch tokens or KDL holders, uh, small or big, will have a fair chance to participate in the upcoming IDOs in its pipeline. Remember, this structure will be subject to change over time in order to maintain a fair and balanced fundraising platform. Without any further ado, let's get into it. So platform registration, know your customer. So this will be uh, KYC uh, verified to be able to participate in the IDOs. Um, I have heard that there are some issues with people in the US um, being able to partake in these IDOs. Now, I haven't actually really looked into that enough to know um, whether it's like something that you can or can't do, or maybe uh, it's a tax issue. I'm not exactly sure. I will have to do further uh, research into that. And if you guys want a video on how all that kind of works out, you can just go ahead and drop a comment and that's something that I'll look into making. Anyways, uh, so in order to participate in the IDO offering, applicants will require to successfully complete KYC verification with the third party KYC provider. This application process will be integrated into the website. Applicants will only have to successfully complete the KYC verification process once and will be whitelisted across the platform, including all future IDOs. KYC verification is not required for staking KDL. So that's good news if you just want to partake in the staking and you really don't care that much about the whole IDO uh, thing, then you can just kind of ignore that and still stake your KDL. So I think that's great. Um, I know a lot of people and, you know, we're in a crypto space where being anonymous is kind of, you know, part of the thing. I know a lot of people are not big fans of KYC and I 100% don't blame you at all. Um, it is understandable why you would want to, you know, just kind of stay anonymous. Um, but here, I think that this is a good call. Um, I think with the IDOs and not having KYC, you run into the issue of bots and people with multiple wallets or multiple, um, you know, whatever, um, kind of partaking more than they should. So this will kind of give everybody an opportunity, uh, an equal opportunity, I should say, to participate in the IDOs. So uh, like I said, I know a lot of people are not a big fans, but when you really think about it, I think it's kind of better for the IDOs anyways. So IDO participation registration, before new IDO starts, there will be a registration period where participants can sign up to participate by registering at the website. The registration process requires participants to stake a specific amount of KDL associated with the desired tier the participant would like to participate in. This staked KDL will be locked for the duration of the registration period and sale, which is typically seven days. As a courtesy to the platform registrants, each will be notified via email of an upcoming IDO for them to participate in. So. Example, a uh, participant currently has 75,000 KDL staked on platform and would like to participate as a tier two for IDO XYZ. In the IDO registration process, the participant would then lock up their 75,000 KDL with IDO XYZ in order to receive their tier two allocation. The participant's KDL, the participant's KDL continues to accrue the staking rewards while locked 
after the IDO is complete, the participants 75,000 KDL stake are unlocked. So um, I also want to mention this. Um, if anybody from the KDL team is watching, uh, I'm not exactly sure why you guys use the uh, period instead of a comma. I know this might be a kind of nitpicky thing, but this confuses a lot of people. I see people in the Telegram being like, is it 75 KDL or is it 75,000? Now, you might think that, you know, it's kind of self-explanatory, um, but uh, a comma would be a lot more legible. Just just a note. So um, I kind of like this. I like the system. I, I think it it works well. The fact that you're going to be able to actually accrue those staking rewards while you're locking it up to get the allocation for whichever tier that it is that you want. So, uh, you know, that's great. Um, so pools. IDOs on KD launch will consist out of a maximum of three different pools. So you'll have the whitelist pool. The whitelist pool is for participants who are whitelisted by the IDO project owners, uh, and that's optional. So then you'll have the allocation pool. The allocation pool is for participants who are given an allocation. And then the first come first serve pool, uh, which the FCFS uh, pool is for any remaining unassigned and unused allocation from the white uh, whitelist pool and the allocation pool. So all IDO participants may participate in this round. So assigning allocation, the allocation size will be set on a per project IDO basis in consultation with the project owners. Factors like the number of participant registrations, maximum raise, et cetera, will be taken into account while determining the allocation size. Allocations are assigned based on the amount of KDL staked for tier eligibility for guaranteed allocation and allocations assigned to lottery winners, which is described in the detail in the next chapter. So next, we're gonna take a look at the tiers. KD Launch uses a lottery system combined with a guaranteed allocations. So there are four tiers that determine the amount of lottery tickets and guaranteed allocation that are distributed to participants in order to keep the allocation as fair as possible and make sure all holders, small or big, will get a chance to participate, we're introducing the below. So the simple fair balancer formula. So for every 5,000 times one plus the guaranteed allocation, uh, KDL staked one lottery ticket is awarded. Uh, so guaranteed allocation are gained according to the following tier systems. So we have tier one. So this is 75,000 or less uh, KDL staked. So you'll get zero guaranteed allocation uh, plus the lottery tickets. Uh, so for tier two, equal or more than 75,000 KDL staked, you'll get one guaranteed allocation plus your lottery tickets. For tier three is 150,000 or more, uh, you'll get two guaranteed allocations plus the lottery tickets. And then for tier four is 300,000 KDL staked, um, and that'll get you four guaranteed allocations and the lottery tickets. So for every tier, lottery tickets are awarded based on the staked amount of KDL locked for the IDO. But because of the balancer mechanism, the amount of KDL needed uh, for one lottery ticket is increased after a guaranteed allocation has been acquired. So here they have some examples um, kind of, now I'm not gonna go through all of these, um, but you know, for tier one example, you have a participant who locks up 50,000 staked uh, KDL for the IDO, and then the participant would be assigned 10 lottery tickets. So, and then, you know, it goes on here for the tier one, 67,000, you would get 13 lottery tickets. And then, um, you know, the rest of the tiers here. So like tier four, if you were to lock up 300,000, uh, you would get four guaranteed allocations, and then you would get 12 lottery tickets. So all tiers can win once with a lottery ticket per IDO, regardless of the amount of lottery tickets that participant is in possession of, lottery tickets cannot be gifted, traded, or sold. Uh, the maximum amount of allocations any participant can acquire uh, for each IDO will be five. And then staking, they don't go super in depth here, uh, but long term staking will be available and highly recommended when participants in the offering on the platforms to accrue staking rewards. An IDO participants KDL uh, continues to accrue staking rewards while locked for participating in the IDO. So like we said, I actually really like that, um, you know, not super in depth here about how the staking will work, but I'm sure um, before, you know, everything launches, they will give a little bit more detail. And when that happens, I will make a video on that. So um, what are my thoughts here on this whole uh, setup? So at first, I, I actually thought that these tiers are way too high. 
Um, 75,000 KDL is a lot. I don't know the exact price of KDL, but when I checked it last night, it was at about 13 cents. So 75,000 KDL times 13 is, you know, that's that's around nine to $10,000. So um, you're going to need to be investing at least nine to $10,000 if you want um, to even participate in the tier two. Um, and you know that'll just get you the one guaranteed allocation and then the lottery tickets. So um, at first I was like, ah, eh, that's that's you know, that's a lot. But then I also kind of took into account that you know tier one is anything under 75,000. So you will still get to participate if you're not holding a huge bag of KDL. Um, but you won't get any guaranteed allocation. And then the lottery tickets are going to kind of just base uh, off of the amount of KDL that you're staking. So um, I do think that they could lower these a bit. I do think that the tier one should be a little bit lower. I feel like you should be able to get at least some, uh, at least, you know, maybe one guaranteed allocation um off of a smaller amount of kdl and then maybe scale those guaranteed allocations up the tiers like they already have um but i don't really know all the details and what it takes uh to kind of you know figure out this system so maybe i just don't know what i'm talking about but to me seventy five thousand seems very very high um but that being said uh, at the end of the day even if you don't have 75,000, you'll still be able to participate and you'll, you'll still get your lottery tickets. But take into account, um, you're basically gonna be getting one lottery ticket uh, per 5,000 KDL here. So, um, I mean, it's it's kind of, you know, how big your bag is. Uh, if you're under 5,000 KDL, it just seems like you're kind of shit out of luck. So, you know, that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, but really, we'll just have to see. You know, they said that these are subject to change. I'm sure after a little bit of community input, they might possibly adjust the tiers, but we will just really have to see. Uh, personally, I I will participate in the IDOs that I can. Uh, I am not holding a huge bag of KDL. Um, honestly, I really just have the bag that I got lucky enough to get from the airdrop. So. Um, you know, that's about 5,000, uh, and that doesn't even get me close, uh, to tier two, um, you know, or even getting really anywhere else. So I don't know. We'll just have to see. Um, but I figured I would go ahead and make this video, getting you guys up to date on how the tier structure is going to go, because I know a lot of people are interested in KD launch and how it's going to work. So, um, yeah. That's going to wrap it up for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a comment letting me know what you guys think about um, this whole tier structure. Um, you know, it doesn't hurt to give the team uh, a little bit of your guys' input. So um, don't be afraid to go into the Telegram and let them know what you think. Obviously, don't be a dick about it. Um, you can say things and give corrective criticism without being rude. So keep that in mind. Uh, I know some people were kind of salty uh, in the Telegram yesterday. So, uh, yeah, if you guys are going to give your input, make sure to be nice about it. Uh, you know, being nice goes a long way. Um, but anyways, uh, leave a like if you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Like I said, we upload three times a week. Um, the videos have been doing great. And I, you know, try to bring a lot of information to you guys as I can. So if you don't want to miss out on that, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Anyways, uh, I'll see you guys later on in the week. And until then, peace.